Hello and welcome. Uh, of over 100 children treated so far at the Bai Jerbai Wadia Hospital for Children in Mumbai, more than 20 or 21 to be specific had developed life-threatening disorders. Now, many of them have been de diagnosed with what is known as pediatric multisystem inflammatory syndrome or PMIS. While children are generally seen as more immune to this dreaded disease, these cases suggest that that may not always be the case. So what do we know of the dis impact of COVID-19 on children? What is this new variation that we are seeing increasingly, not just in India, but also in other parts of the world? And to understand this, I'm joined by the CEO of the Varia Hospital, uh, Dr. Mini Bodhanwala. Dr. Bodhanwala, thank you very much for joining us. Hi, how are you? Right. So first question. So one is we have heard about the Kawasaki disease symptoms among children, uh, which uh, causes inflammation in blood vessels throughout the body. So what is the connection between uh, the Kawasaki disease, uh, the first signs of which were at least reported in cities like New York about two months ago and PMIS, the way we are seeing it today? Uh, Kawasaki uh, like disease is just one of the presentations of uh, PIMS, but most of these children come in a shock. And that's mostly a cardio uh, circulatory shock. And what is the condition in which they come to you, uh, doctor? What, I mean, what, what state are they in and uh, what are the symptoms that are the most prevalent or visible? Uh, they usually, if we go to see, uh, like one of them came at the last stage, so we could not save that child. But the other 20 we could save. And uh, actually these come after mostly COVID. They turn negative after being positive. That's around an intubation time of 10 to 15 days. Or they have somebody in the family who's still, you know, COVID positive. And these uh, children usually come with a very bad breathlessness and uh, the cardiorespiratory shock and the, uh, you know, their vasopressins and fluid also is less. So this is mainly how they are being presented to us. Right. And I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. But tell us about how many COVID-19 positive cases of children you've seen uh, since uh, March and what has been uh, the way, I mean, how has that progressed and how many have been cured and so on? Uh, we have seen more than 600, uh, I mean, uh, isolation cases, but out of that we found 150 were positive cases, COVID positive cases. And out of that, 21 were cases of PIMS we found. And these PIMS cases we started identifying you at the end of uh, May and June, mid May and June, we started identifying where they already had a bout of COVID positive and they were detected COVID positive. Right. So and that is. What's your... Yeah, go ahead. And what we found is, you know, the immunity in these children where they have developed in antibodies and this is why, you know, their body is unable to still fight and it becomes a syndrome for them. Right. So you're saying, OK, so uh, like these new tests, for instance, the sero studies we're seeing, where, uh, I mean, there are, for instance, there's a figure of 57 percent of uh, uh, all slum residents are uh, uh, negative, I mean, are showing antibodies or and therefore. So in the case of children, you're saying that despite showing the antibodies, they're still developing these uh, symptoms. Yeah, there's a disruption in the immunity of these children. And that is right. the so, reason this is being created. Right. So if, if uh, uh, of the 600 cases, 20 have gone uh, into the serious uh, uh, mode and of which you've had one casualty. How, but in terms of, I mean, purely statistically, how are these numbers looking to you? Uh, statistically, we are just working out on these numbers and I don't think anywhere in the world these numbers have been reported till date. And what I feel is that uh, while seeing to the COVID and the way it is going now, it will be difficult to find more numbers because in Mumbai, as we are seeing the COVID statistics are going down. So maybe we will have to work on the numbers we have. In, and I think in Mumbai, we have, uh, I mean, Wadia Hospital has the maximum numbers which have been seen. Also, we are trying to see why no other state has reported or no other place in India has reported this. So is it that the finding has been missed out 
or overlooked. That's another cause of concern. Right, but, but on the other hand, it, could it also be said that uh, the cases are fairly rare uh, that uh, and, and do not necessarily represent a, a, a sort of a larger and more dangerous trend? Yeah, the cases are rare, but if missed, it could be a threat. Right. So, uh, could you tell us or would you know anything more about the, the condition of these children before they contracted or they came to the hospital? I mean, any, any insights on what their, uh, I, I, did they have any prior conditions, uh, any insights about their immunity levels or prior immunity levels? No, they have all been, either they are now again COVID positive, they have tested or they are negative. So we cannot comment too much on the immunity level, but we definitely do know that these children started improving with steroids and IV immunoglobulins. So that gives us a you know fair picture that the immunity of that child has been disrupted and the immunity is not too good in those children. In right. spite no. of getting through the bout of COVID, which says gives you the immunity. Right. So my question also is, is there, uh, is there anything to suggest that, uh, you know, for instance, like in the case of older patients, it's very clear that if you have uh, certain types of comorbidities, uh, like in India, it could be diabetes, uh, obesity and so on, then the chances of uh, you becoming serious uh, from COVID are higher. Uh, is there anything like that or uh, any kind of understanding when it comes to children? Yes, the same applies in children. Also, perhaps uh, there are a lot of children or rather one case who we have with uh, the same symptoms as well as with cancer. So that patient is quite critical with us also. So there are things like, you know, cancer, diabetes and cardiovascular problems, which uh, I mean, they need to be careful of. Right. So therefore, you're saying that children who are already having some kind of comorbidities are therefore at more risk. Uh, yes. I mean, it's not like a normal healthy child is likely to uh, contract COVID or contract uh, PMIS the way you've described it. Yes, they are. I mean, the ones with comorbidities are the ones who take a different turn in this. Right. So uh, tell us about uh, the recovery. And uh, if you said that, you know, almost all children who've come to your hospital have got treated. Uh, is the recovery path similar to those in adults? Is it faster? Uh, is there any uh, residual damage, like again in the case of adults? No, we have not found till now any residual damages. We are evaluating that conditions and we found that it takes between 10 to uh, 20 days for recovery to happen in these children. And also we are working this out with ICMR with whatever statistics we have at present with us. So, I mean, let us see how far we move on this study. Right. You, you mentioned treatment. Now, is the treatment protocol that you're following, uh, again, similar to adults? And I'm sure the, uh, I mean, the dosage and everything else would be different, but is it similar or are there different uh, kinds of treatment protocols for children? No, the treatment lines are similar to an adult. There's right. no difference because we are giving the same steroid and IV immunoglobulin. Right. Okay, so uh, last couple of questions. So what's your sense? I mean, knowing this, uh, how, is there something that you would advise parents uh, and therefore children uh, to be more careful or is there something they should be, uh, you know, how, how could they be preparing their children for it? Because largely uh, uh, most of us uh, or most people have uh, assumed that children will be taken care of or will be safe, but it's the adults that uh, have to be looking out for themselves or be worried about. I think uh, the parents also need to be careful that if anybody has any COVID in the family or even if the child has had a bout of COVID and present any symptoms like breathlessness, diarrhea or so, do not take it lightly, fever, but uh, go to the nearest clinic, show yourself and re get yourself re-evaluated before it turns out into the syndrome. Right. So, and, and you said that uh, the... Uh, Symptoms that you talked about, are they the most common symptoms uh, like uh, rash and fever and so on, breathlessness? Uh, mostly rash is not seen, but it is the uh, breathlessness, fever and diarrhea which is seen. Got it. 
Okay, uh, and and last question. Uh, what's the broad age group of uh, the uh, the children that you've been seeing, uh, including uh, all the 600 that you have treated so far? We've been seeing from around five years to 14 years. That's the age group. Right, right. So most cases are in this band. Yeah, five to 14. Right. Uh, Dr. Bodenwale, thank you very much for uh, joining us and I do wish you and your team all the very best uh, against this uh, in the fight against this dreaded disease. Thank you so much. Thank you.